We were talking about um, expendable income and, and jobs and things like that, and this generation kind of being in that tough spot about it. And we we're, right now, it's like there's this big thing going on where we are talking a lot about jobs. Like there's a big obsession with just having a job of some kind. Um, and in my show, I'm, I'm talking a little bit about this notion of jobs um, as classism, right? Uh, our employment is part of the classist culture that we are, uh, that, that uh, we are a part of in the United States. Uh, I'm not going to ba- do the bit. Uh, come see the live show uh, and you'll probably see it. Um, so, so we were kind of talking about it and I kind of got reminiscent in thinking like, yeah, I kinda, I, I've had a job since I was like, 14 years old uh like I I've always known what it's like to not have any money because I because my dad would never fucking (laughs) like he never wanted to give me any money to help me like do stuff like all my friends would always be like we're gonna go bowling and I would be like oh cool I wanna come and they're like cool so it costs like eight dollars per person for the lanes and then there's like soda and food and I was like oh so I need like 20 bucks at least to like go bowling for a night uh I don't know how to do that and they're like oh our parents just gave us 20 dollars to go bowling and he's like my parents didn't really do that very often my mom would my mom would help me out a bunch my dad never did my dad was uh super hard ass about it um, and like never fucking, he was just like, fun, fun's not something you spend money on. It's, you spend money on what I dictate you spend money. That's sort of the household that I came up with, right? So, um, when I was about 10, my mom started giving me an allowance about, uh, of a dollar a week. And my sister got two dollars a week, but we had a list of chores we had to do. Every single week, we had to complete these chores Uh, and complete our homework and make sure that our grades were keeping up and we got a dollar from my mom every week and my sister got two when I was 12 I got bumped up to two she got bumped up to four so we always kind of had a little bit of money and we always like our 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 household was like I was raised with like having responsibilities surrounding that sort of stuff Um, so my my dad kind of got a little pissy about the allowance thing uh and my sister and I were basically like, okay, well, we're done with him trying to control us with, with finances. So we, um, so my sister, you know, like, we, we were like, we got to get jobs. We don't want to be under his thumb anymore. So uh, my sister got a job at Subway when she was in high school. And I couldn't, I was way too young. I was four years younger than my sister, so I was still like 12, right? I was still like getting that $2 a week. And every so often, my mom would give me a little little bit extra to go, you know, go to a movie with my friends or what have you. And so, when I was 14, I was finally like, fuck this shit. I gotta get it. I got, I don't want to, I'm so tired of him, like, every time that I want to go out with my fr- friends, giving me a whole bunch of shit. You know, like, making me feel bad, making me feel like I'm an asshole, all this other shit. Like, I'm just fucking done with it. So, I, my first job that I ever got uh, was at Subway. And uh, I was 14, and I worked uh, two days out of the week. I worked every Saturday and Sunday for four hours. Um, and I would make my sandwiches, and I would make about 50 bucks a day. Uh, or was it 50 bucks a day or 50 bucks a weekend? Oh, man, this was so fucking long ago. Uh, this was 16 years ago, you guys. Uh, I think it was... Yeah, okay, I think it was... I think it was about 50 bucks a day is what I ended up getting, kind of. Plus tips, that's right. It was 50 bucks plus tips, so I would always get a little bit extra... And basically what my mom would do is take half of that and say, we're saving this up. We're saving this up. So I would always have uh, some money on hand as a 14-year-old. And no, none of my other friends had money, right? So that's kind of how I was able to afford, uh, like, my comic book collections. Like, I had a comic book collection. My sister helped me start that. Um, 
and she basically like got me this like big big collection of comic books from eBay uh, for like getting out of eighth grade uh, alive. <laughs> like that was the fucking present. Uh, so right before I got into high school, I got like a bunch of fucking Spider-Man comics, um, like Maximum Carnage. Uh, some of the Venom stuff. I got a couple of the Clone Saga ones, which was, which was, like, I read them, and I was like, why is this happening with Spider-Man? <laughs> like, I have no fucking connection to Ben Riley at all. Like, I do not care about this character. And I have, like, five fucking books where he's the fucking guy! And it, I was, like, so pissed off about it that I didn't even want to ever read it. Um, but I would, like, go, and then, like, I started getting, like, the Ultimate uh, series... I had a couple Fantastic Four books, a couple X-Men books. Um, so I would collect those stories. Like she got me started on a couple of stories, and so and then I and then I started collecting mangas. So I had a big collection of mangas. Uh, I I almost got through the Helsing ones. I kind of wish I like I don't remember the story entirely, but I really fucking liked Helsing when I was in, when I was in high school, right? And, and I was working. At, uh, at Subway and making my money and then uh, I would go and I like that's what I would do I would get paid I'd get paid in cash I'd get some tips and then I would uh, I would uh, and then I would like take half of it and I would put it in a different spot in my wallet and take the other half of it and I would go and I would spend like uh, 14 15 bucks on mangas and comic books from Barnes and Nobles because that was the only place I could go to to like buy fucking comic books and then I would get back on the fucking train and go home and I would read that shit on the train it would be I would be so fucking excited about it and none of my friends could do anything right like because they didn't they didn't have expendable income so like they didn't fucking buy any of this shit um you know but they were also like they didn't need to because if because like they all spent their they all had like video games and video game systems and stuff like that and uh and uh, look I'm not, I'm not trying to be, like, judgmental about the way they were raised or anything. It was just completely different circumstances. Um, and when I was a kid, I was kind of fucking envious of it. But, like, they, you know, if, if they wanted, like, Halo 2, they just got Halo 2 from their parents. And it was never a question. And I was just like, what the fuck is that like? <laughs> like, what is, you know, I was kind of, kind of mildly resentful of it. Um, and, but, but I think it, like... I don't know, it made me who I am today, and it made me see a different side of things, and it, and it like, brought me up a specific way that I, I don't think I would ever change, right? So I worked through Subway um, pretty much all through high school. Uh, over the summers, I would do two different stores, uh, and I would work, like, six-hour shifts instead of four-hour shifts, and same thing is they would give me cash at the end of the day and we'd fuck right off. Um, so I had, I had amassed a pretty decent comic book collection by the end of high school, which I was like super fucking proud of, uh, comic book and mangas. And, uh, and then I kind of didn't want to do, I hated Subway. <laughs> people were cool like I've never had a problem with like most of the people that I've worked with at any of these jobs most of the people uh it's just that the job itself is just like why is this a fucking job why are people treated like this uh <laughs> you know like because everything for Subway was just a bunch of fucking people that were like like way too gleeful about a goddamn submarine sandwich they were way too excited about a hoagie, and I was like, it's a hoagie, it's fine, you don't, like, I'm not, you don't, I don't need to be as excited as you, and you don't need to be offended that I'm not as excited as you about a goddamn hoagie, like, just fucking relax, so, I, I, uh, at age 17, I graduated from high school, and I got a work permit for two months, and uh, I got a job at, uh, at a shop and save at a grocery store. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and that job was fucking weird, too. Uh, and, and then, like, a couple months... Well, no, because I had a work permit. 
Hold on. I'm trying to remember the details of it. Oh, yeah. Cause I, okay, so I got a work permit, and then I, like, kept that work permit until I got my green card. Yeah, because I got my green card right after my freshman year of college. Uh, and so that work permit carried me through the, the, the year, and then I didn't need to renew it the next year because I got the green card and all that kind of stuff. Right, okay. So, but, so I worked... At, like a bunch over the summer I'm you know I made uh, a good friend and we would hang out and like it was great because I was like awesome there's another cynical fucking cashier and bagger person that I can like hang out with uh, and I remember there were the like the way this court script thing was set up is there's one general manager then there was uh, then there was like uh, a front end manager uh, and she did not like me and then there was a uh, a grocery manager and a stock manager, uh, and those two guys were great. Um, I actually gave the stock manager one of my favorite ties because you had to wear a tie at, at this job. Uh, you, you had to wear a dress shirt, a white dress shirt, and a and a solid color tie, uh, and like slacks and shit. So I I get so the dude was like always kind of impressed with a couple of my ties which I basically took a bunch of the ties that my dad didn't fucking like and I was just like you know what I don't give a shit you've been an asshole to me all my life you don't wear this shit this shit just stays in a bag and you don't even fucking notice them so I don't give a shit and I took his ties and some of them were very nice and then I bought myself a tie I bought myself a tie and and that was the I was very excited about it that became my favorite tie it was it was a red tie that I had um, and it was, and I bought it from Macy's on sale for eight dollars. I was very excited that it was on sale, and that, and I, and I, I was like really excited about it. Um, I think I bought it. I might have bought it with my subway money actually, and because I think I had, I had it like before I graduated. By the way, right before I got this job, <laughs> I recorded my very first album album that I don't think many people will ever fucking hear. Uh, unless, like, somehow, like, somebody releases it through, like, you know, some, something, like, and that's how it gets released out there, uh, I recorded an album when I was fucking 17 years old, uh, at a coffee shop called The Coffee Den that doesn't fucking exist anymore, and I did that, like, a week before I started, uh, my job at Shop and Save, um, and so, yeah, I just kind of remember uh, a couple things about that job that kind of, like, irked me. Uh, one of the days, so I always, I hated being a cashier because it was just so boring. Like, I wasn't doing anything. So I went and talked to the general manager, and he was like, sure, uh, you can be a cashier, and then we'll get you trained to be a stock boy, too, so you can go, like, do stock stuff, unload pallets, and re restock the shelves and things like that. So when it's slow, you have something to do. And I was like, fucking awesome. So, uh, so that, so, you know, the two managers, the grocery manager and stock manager would talk to me and they would figure stuff out. And every so often they would be like, are you busy? And would be like, no, there's fucking nobody here. And they're like, great, we have a pallet, let's do, and I was like, fuck yeah, let's do this. And it was awesome, like kept me physically active. I felt good about it. I felt like I was still like kind of working out and stuff. Uh, and one of the days that happened, and they called me, and there was, like, a big pallet of, like, uh, sodas or something that I had to undo, and I was very excited about it, and I started doing it, and then the front-end manager, she calls me over the, over the intercom, uh, and, uh, and I, like, I was like, ah, shit, and the other stock boy was like, go, 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 so I, I ran back up, and, uh, I get there, and, and, sh and somebody else is ringing on my register. And I was like, what the fuck is this all about? And she was like, looks like somebody lost their register, huh? Somebody's lost their register. That's right. That's what happens when somebody walks away from their register. That's why you should never walk away from your register. You never know. You never know. And I was like, there's four fucking people shopping in this goddamn store. And you called me because one of those four fucking people came up? Like, what? what is wrong with you? And that was like the whole fucking dynamic of of that store. And and I worked there um, through college. I had a job on campus doing like uh, in the administrative administrative office at my college. 
there's like one guy that I like there. Uh, and the only reason I would go in most days is because I had a, a crush on one of the girls I was working with. <laughs> that I never had the balls to ask out either. <laughs> like, I never fucking asked her out. I danced with her once at a college dance, and I never fucking had the balls to ask her out. But it was cool, though, you know, because, like, we kind of got to know each other, and we became, like, pretty good friends. Uh, and we would like talk all the time and stuff And that was kind of cool uh, I haven't talked to her in fucking forever though um, I should do a better job of keeping up with people I never had the boss ass this girl out But I would go I would like I hated I also didn't like this fucking job either Because I would like stuff envelopes uh, I like giving the tours Because I would get to talk to people and, uh, and, like, be funny and shit. Like, I, I, I always kind of enjoyed that. Uh, giving the tours. Like, I gave a bunch of tours. I love that shit. Stuffing envelopes, making phone calls to, like, ask people for money. Fucking hated that shit. But I would do it because I got to hang out with this girl. So, uh, like, I'm the fucking, o like, this is, like, OG Jim Pam shit from The Office. You know, I fucking lived that life. I just didn't get married to that girl. But like I would work that job and then I would go home and work through like all of the all of the breaks Like I would work at the grocery store through all of the breaks um, And then I worked there uh, the summer before my sophomore year of college as well uh, Or did I hold on I'm getting my timelines wrong right because uh, I'm like old now and I'm trying to figure this stuff out No no, that's right. I did work through that my the summer before my sophomore year. Because I came back and I got that same campus job again. But I only worked there for one semester. Uh, because I worked too much. And I ran out of work study uh, my sophomore year. And so like the second semester of my sophomore year. I, uh, I, just, I just like didn't have a, a job. It was like the first time that I like didn't have a job. And I thought about doing um, Shop and Save again uh, for the second semester, but I went back for Christmas, and uh, and I hated it so much. Like, I was just so fucking miserable uh, that I told the general manager that I'm putting in my two weeks, um, like, the, like, pretty much after the first shift that I got in there for, and, uh, and then I gave my tie to the, to the, the stock manager, uh, I think his name is Mark. He was super fucking cool. Um, he was great. He had, like, a real deadpan set of humor, sense of humor, too. So he'd make these, like, weird deadpan remarks that for a little while, like, I didn't understand whether they were fucking jokes or not. Uh, I liked him. He was a cool dude. He was a good dude. But uh, after that, so I had that one semester where I, like, didn't have this job. So I was just fucking dead broke uh, that semester. Like, I stopped buying... I, I had bought books in forever. I hadn't bought CDs in forever. That's the other thing I used to spend my money on, is fucking albums. I used to buy CDs all the goddamn time. All the goddamn time. I had a huge collection of CDs, right? Like, in high school, like, I was known for just having a stack of CDs in my backpack that I would cycle through. Like I, and I don't fucking do that anymore because I just don't have the fucking money. But... You know, but also, like, when I was, like, 14, 15, up to, like, 23, I didn't have to fucking deal about deal with rent or anything. Like, I didn't have to worry about food. <laughs> you know, like, I was getting that shit taken care of. Uh, but, uh, but then, so, so then the following summer, the summer before my junior year, um, I got a job at Starbucks. <laughs> and, the, and the second that I got this job, the guy that fucking hired me gets fired. Uh, for I guess for being like creepy or some shit or like something crazy happened and he gets fired like that and so I had this weird insecurity where I was like was it me was it because he hired me like I got real weird and insecure about it uh, I kind of like that job actually I really I did enjoy working at Starbucks I got fr a bunch of free coffee I got to make a bunch of weird drinks for me like that nobody else fucking liked except me and it was awesome uh, and, uh, you know, again, like, I made really good friends, uh, that I need to fucking do a better job of keeping up with, and, uh, and, like, I, 
got like some of the regulars were cool. I got to hang out with some like uh, Lou and Fast Eddie. Like I'll never forget those those guys. They were fucking awesome. World War Two vets. You know, like, they, and they would get, like, real serious with me every once in a while, and then they would fuck with me a whole bunch. They were awesome. I really fucking liked them. So I would, like, go, and then I, and then what I started doing, too, was by the end of the summer, I was showing up 30, 30 minutes early just to get a cup of coffee ahead of time to sit outside and bullshit with Fast Eddie and Lou. And, like, every, all the other fucking regulars that were there. Because it was fun. Like, I had a good time. Because of the fucking people that were showing up. So then I wanted to, like, keep that going, right? Because I was like, I'm not getting work study. Like, I stopped getting work study my junior year. It just didn't happen. Or, or I didn't put in for it. Something happened and I didn't get work study. Um, and so my junior year of college, I worked at Starbucks on the weekends. And I worked uh, on, at one by the campus... Uh, and there was another girl that I fucking had a crush on, so I was, like, real excited to work the weekends, because she also worked weekends, and she went to a different college, and I thought she was super pretty, uh, and, you know, like, I maybe hung out with her off campus, like, once, you know, like, a not at Starbucks once, like, that, that sort of shit, but I never had the fucking balls to ask her out either, um, uh, I, I never, I, like, that's that's just who I was in college. Like, that's a part of me that I was just like, ugh, I'm glad I'm not fucking like that anymore. Um, now as an adult, I'm just like, I don't know if this girl likes me. And whatever they do, I'm like, what do they want from me? <laughs> Is it money? <laughs> do you want money? <laughs> but, uh, I, I, so then... I had to get transferred for Christmas break, right? Because I had like three weeks off for Christmas break, and I had to get transferred from the uh, the store by my college back to my original store that I started working at. And when that happened, the new manager at the store by my college decided that he's not going to hire me back. So I got I was just like, what? So the assistant managers there were just like, we don't know why why you're not in the schedule. This is really fucking weird. All your paperwork, all your transfer stuff is done, but he just hasn't added you to the payroll or the or the schedule, and it's really weird. And then I and then I was like, all right. So then the first week of this new semester starts, but for my junior year, and I'm like, I still like, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Uh, I, I mean, it's kind of nice that I have like a weekend or two, but I kind of want to like not be broke all the time. Uh, uh, and uh, and then. I get a call, and they're like, can you come down to the store, and uh, the one of the assistant managers was just like, we don't know what's going on, but Steve said you're not welcome back at the store, and I was like, what, and he's like, nobody understands what the fuck happened, but he basically said, like, he left at the busy time, he's not here for this, he's not here, he's not part of the team, he's not part of the family, blah, 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 so he's like, what we're gonna do is call your home store and see if their manager can take you back on board because we don't want you to be screwed because this guy doesn't like he like he's like nobody's ever complained about you like that's crazy that that's this is happening so i got retransferred back to the original store so every weekend every friday i didn't have friday classes that semester so every friday i would wake up i would go and like get lunch with one of my friends and then i would come back i would pack up my shit and I would drive, and I would drive like 45 minutes to an hour, and I would, uh, I would have to go home every weekend. Uh, and I was fucking miserable, miserable about it. I fucking hated it. Because I never got to see my friends. Because every Friday, I'd fuck off to go work, and I would always work closing shift on Friday... And I would work, like, another closing shift on Saturday. And then I would work, like, mid-shift on Sunday so I could drive my ass back to campus, unpack, get my work done for Monday morning, and start the week all over again. 
And I hated it. I was so fucking miserable. I was so fucking miserable. And I was so fucking alone the entire time. Because I never, I didn't want to be at home because I know my dad was going to fucking give me shit about it. And all of my other ho- friends from home, like all my friends from like high school and stuff that I was like really close with, they were on campus. They fucking, they, they weren't at home. They weren't, you know, and even when they were like, I'm working fucking six or seven hour shifts, so I never got to see anybody. So that kind of sucked. And, uh, and by the end of the semester, you know, I was like, I don't know how long I can keep doing this. And I got, and I went back in for the summer, the summer before my senior year of college. Um, and I think that was the last uh, that I worked at Starbucks because at the end of it, I got an internship. Uh, which is all like internships are fucking bullshit. Uh, you should pay your people. Uh, pay them something. You know, fucking get them some. 50 bucks a day. I don't give a shit. You got to pay them some. Uh, I talk about that on my show too. But anyway, but uh, yeah, I got an internship. So I was like, I can't handle making this drive and being in school and having this internship. Like, I think it's a bad idea. It's a bad look. So I just, uh, I, I, I quit that job and then I got this internship and I did this internship for the semester. Um, and, and that was okay. But again, it was like, once I kind of knew, I started like not spending any money for a month. And then I started like not having any money period and trying to figure out what I was going to do for a job. Uh, and it, and meanwhile, by the way, I'm still doing stand-up on campus. Like, I'm still doing stand-up, like, on campus and around campus and stuff like that. And, uh, I didn't, like, I didn't fucking know what to do. You know, like, I was fucking dead broke the, my entire senior year of college. Um, I, like, never had any money. I never had any money. Uh, I think at one point, I got my job back at Subway... And I just remember driving back from Subway, like I worked Saturday, Sundays again, and I was like, I feel like I'm fucking 14 all over again, man. Like, it sucks. And I remember, like, freaking the fuck out on one of my drives of just, like, realizing what where my life was going. And I was like, I have $132 in my bank account, and I'm, and I'm working this fucking shitty job. And I hate it and everything sucks and I just fucking freaked out and started crying in the car and I'm screaming uh, and I just felt awful uh, so I only worked at Subway for maybe a month because I like couldn't deal with it I just fucking had a spaz out and when I graduated college I couldn't find a fucking job in my field um, and so like the only job that I wound up, I applied everywhere, I applied everywhere, I got so desperate after I graduated college to just have a job to not be broke, because the, because the way that I survived the first two months, yeah, I think it was like two months before I fucking found a job, which I didn't even find a job in my field, I found a part-time job that paid me pittance, and I think I had to get a job soon, because I had to pay off my student loans that, like, that were coming up. So I got a fucking job at a shoe store, but I got so desperate before I got that job that I fucking applied at Walmart, of all places, uh, and fuck all the goddamn application process at Walmart. It's like 50 pages for Walmart? For, for you to treat me like shit, I have to fill out 50 pages? You can go fuck right off, Walmart. So I got a job at a shoe store, and then I... And then I also decided that I wanted to do freelance graphic design, so I'm looking for clients doing freelance graphic design, and I didn't find a client until like a month and a half after I got the shoe store job, and I'm also trying to do stand-up and maintain a brand new fucking relationship, and I was like, I I was mildly fucking losing my gourd at this point, right? Like, I'm, I'm not fucking handling shit very well. Uh, but I'm maintaining, I'm keeping together, I, I, I never have any money because every time I amass any sort of money, like, I would just, just shove a whole bunch of money into my student loans, 
Um, and then, like, I got, I got to a point where I got a temp job. I applied to a temp company uh, just to be like, I got to find something. And I got this job, like, as an audit something. Like I, like, I audit corporations information or something along those lines. But it's like a corporation just being like, this seems weird. And then I would fix it on their thing and then uh, let them know that I did that. That's, that was my whole fucking job and I hated it. So I would spend my whole day doing that. I'd be done with all of that by noon. I would go eat lunch and I would hide underneath the stairwell because I don't want anybody like... Everybody that worked there were just a bunch of catty women that fucking hated me because I wasn't going to sit there and be catty with them, right? And then I would go underneath the stairs at the very bottom of the stairs. I would eat my lunch all by myself and I would read... I would read like HTML books so I could learn how to code properly and take notes on like specific ways to code. And then I would go and uh, I would get in my car and uh, three days out of the week, I would drive the other side of town to work at the shoe store for four more hours. So it's essentially pulling like 14 hour days. And then, and then if I was lucky enough, if I was lucky enough, I would fucking go and do a late night. I would get like a late night spot at an open mic uh, before I had to like fucking get home at like one o'clock in the morning, pass out and do, and then like wake up again at like seven and do that whole fucking shit all over again. I did that for like two, three months before I before my body was just like, it's not going to work out, bro. It's not going to work out. Uh, to the point where <laughs> the girl I was dating at the time, and I feel so fucking bad for this, but uh, she wanted to do something like nice for my birthday, right? And uh, so I, um, my birthday ended up being on a Friday. And uh, I didn't, like, and I'm still working both these jobs. And I didn't work at the shoe store on Friday. Uh, but I took Saturday off at the shoe store, too. Because, like, she was like, I want to spend birthday time to get with you. And, like, don't worry about anything. Like, I got you covered. So we went out for, like, a nice dinner. We got a nice dessert. And then we went back to, to, her, to her parents' place. And, uh, and like, you know, like, the, the, the nobody's home. So we were going to try to get in, like, some sexy time together. And uh, so, like, we're naked and we're fooling around. And, and then immediate something fucking tripped in my brain with, like, all of this crazy shit happening all at the same time that I'm not talking about with anybody. I'm not, like, expressing my feelings out to her. And I just snapped and just started bawling my eyes out. On my birthday, <laughs> when we're both naked and trying to like have sex, I'm in fucking tears. Like I can't handle it. I feel like I'm letting everybody down. All this shit is awful. I feel like I'm a fucking failure. <laughs> like I am losing it, which I'm sure is like, I'm almost certain that's not what you're supposed to do when you are nude with an erection. Like that's not gonna help you maintain it <laughs> like that was like the worst part about all of it uh so after that it was basically like all right i, I don't think i could fucking do this I'm, I'm having a fucking meltdown and i told my mom i was quitting and i remember like that was like a huge fucking fight with my mom um and i went back to doing regular hours at the at the shoe store again um I think it took like Jesus Christ maybe another eight months before I got like a real design job I got a design job at this like design boutique uh, but it was just fun for a little while I was always late I, I'm not somebody that likes to get up in the morning and go sit in traffic for ever you know like I just fucking hated that part of the whole commute bullshit and so I got that job that job lasted about a year, uh, and that and that at that point is like when I was just like I gotta really dip into this comedy shit. Like if I'm really gonna try to do it, um, so I did. I was going to open mics way fucking more when I got the stage job, and I, and you know it was I was still not getting paid a whole bunch. I think I, at most I made like twenty five grand, which was still like fucking pittance, you know. Like I still never had any money. 
I would still take like a bunch of my paycheck and throw it into my student loans. Uh, and then I did that for a year and I was getting serious with this girl. So we, I was like, well, I got to like get a real big boy job with like health insurance and shit. So, uh, I got a job at GNC. I got a, jo- a corporate job at GNC and, uh, I was going to start that. I went, I went on like my first vacation since I like ever got out of college essentially. And I, uh, I came back, we broke up, that kind of sucked. And I, cause I got this big boy job for her, you know, and I basically at that point was just like, all right, this is not the end game anymore. Like I can't fucking be in an office doing all these jobs that I hate and having these mental breakdowns every, every year, you know, like I can't, I can't go through like a yearly mental breakdown about my job and feeling like I'm a, like I'm not, I don't have any meaning to my life. So I'm going to, I'm going to like try to figure out how to do this comedy thing full time. Uh, and, and, you know, I was basically at this, at this GNC job and I would write every day because I would, I would do these things and then I would have to send them off and there's like 18 departments that would have to all fucking approve everything that you do. So like, there'd just be hours of the day where I'm just like sitting there with my dick in my hands like, what the fuck? I'm not literally. That's a HR violations if I was literally sitting there with a the dick in my hands. Okay? I'm not, don't fucking judge. Don't be that fucking weird about it. Figuratively. Figuratively. Because I, I just didn't like, I didn't have anything to do. So I would just like write. I would look up uh, news articles I would look up like what clubs can I showcase at uh, what are gigs I can get on are there places with one nighters who are bookers to contact so I did all that shit and um, I, I worked there for three months and then I fucking got fired <laughs> I got fired 12 days before Christmas that's when they fired me I was the newest hire and the art director did not care uh like she turned all of my ideas down all the time and but but like the senior director and i got along fucking great like he found out i did stand up and he looked up my material and he was like you're fucking funny and i was like thanks man (laughs) like i don't know what the fuck to say i was like you can come to a show if you want uh and he's like i got kids man like i can't fucking get away on the weekends i gotta do kid shit you know like uh, and he was like an old, you know, metalhead, fucking punk rock dude. He was awesome. I, I really liked that guy. I kept in touch with him for like four or five months after I got out of uh, uh, out of GNC. But I, but I'm gonna wrap this up because we're we're getting this video is getting a little bit longer than what I want it to be. But that's fine. But anyway, but like the way I got fired from that job too, it, like everything about it kind of was just so b- bizarre and weird. Uh. I get, we, we did weekly performance reports, but we did them on like Tuesdays, right? And this was a Monday, and she was like, hey, we're going to do a thing. Do you want to come to the uh, meeting? And she, uh, yeah, sure. So I went into the meeting room, and uh, she was, she was, uh, she, you know, she went ahead first, and I, and I walked in there, and I had like my folder of like notes and shit that I was going to take. And I walk in and the HR lady is sitting there. And I was like, ah, shit. And my art director looks at me and she goes, uh, so we don't think you're progressing at the, sa- at the rate that we would like you to progress. So I think it's just best if we part ways. If you have any questions, talk to the HR lady. Bye! And fucking left. <laughs> like, didn't give me a chance to like ask her any questions or see if there was like a different way to deal with stuff. She was just like, and you're out of here. So the HR lady was like, I got some fucking forms for you to sign. And she like gave me that. And I was like, ah, okay. And she's like, uh, we'll give you some time to like clean up your desk. And, uh, you know, if, and then we'll have security come up and escort you out of the building. So I went back to my desk and immediately brought out my hard drive and copied all the shit, that, like all of my writing files that I had saved, like in a in a folder deep into the hard drive. I deleted all that. I deleted a bunch of shit. I cleared all the history. I got all my passwords uh, off the computer. 
uh, and then I and then I was just like, you know what? Fuck this shit. And I stole a bunch of fonts. <laughs> it's fucking eight years ago. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to take a bunch of these fonts. <laughs> and I packed up my stuff. I didn't have anything. Like, I didn't decorate my fucking cubicle or whatever. I had, like, uh, I had like a calendar. Uh, and I was just like, I don't fucking need this calendar. And I got my, my binder of, uh, you know, all the paperwork shit that I had. And um, nobody was around me as I'm packing up, by the way. Um, and I walked out. Uh, and as I walked out, I ran into the senior director. And at, like everybody from the department is like walking back to their desks because they had a special meeting about me. And I, which I was just like, what a fucking weird. Like you had a meeting about me. Um, and he goes... What did she say? What happened? I don't understand. And I was like, I don't either, man. Uh, and I was like, hey, it was really good to work with you. I really appreciate everything. Like, keep in touch. You know, I said my goodbyes to everybody there. Uh, and everybody was just like, what the fuck is going on right now? So, uh, and then, you know, like, I basically walked down. There, like, security met me at the elevator. And they were like, turn in your badge. <laughs> so turn in my fucking badge. And I got back, took the train, got into my car, and I went and sat at a Starbucks. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I, I can't fucking... I'm wasting time. I'm wasting time, and I keep having these fucking mental breakdowns. So I just got to do what... I think it's the best thing to do, which is stand up, right? And this is like the last real job that I that I've had. I've I've, I've gotten little part time shit here and there to supplement some income when times got tough. I worked at the uh, at the museum. I did you know some gig economy stuff. Sometimes you got to do that to supplement the income, but this is this is everything. And it was that moment where I was like sitting at this old Starbucks that I used to work at, and uh, and I was just like. Yeah, I can't fuck around anymore. And I basically, like, got my laptop out. I made an inventory of comedy clubs I wanted to showcase at. I made an inventory of all the gigs I had coming up. And which which of those gigs would give me a good tape to send out. I made an inventory of all of my bits that I was doing. And then, like, started making set lists of, like, what's a good 10? What's a good 15? What's a good 30? Can I construct an hour out of it? And, um, and, I, and then I started looking up, like, festivals I wanted to apply to. One-nighters I could... Uh, bookers across the country. Uh, NACA representatives. What does that involve? And, uh, you know, I got to give a big shout-out to Ron Placone. Because Ron was really th the first person that took a chance and, like... Help me get on the road. Help me figure out how to maneuver this this stuff. Uh, and I was like, you know, I got nothing holding me back. I got nothing keeping me here. Uh, and uh, and I haven't looked back since. Uh, and I think that's the best fucking decision I've made. One of the best fucking decisions I've made. So. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is part of a little series I do called Road Reflections, where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current socio-political environment, current news stories, uh, debates, that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk or Forkful of Noodles. It's a little bit looser. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, you can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian. And uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, and another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road.